Webster defined addiction as, quote, the frequent and compulsive use of a substance which the user knows to be harmful. Now, that's from a 1986 episode of the show Webster, <laughs> which never aired on TV. Although it was later released as a webisode. <laughs> but Emmanuel Lewis was only half right. <laughs> Addiction doesn't need to involve a substance. It can apply to any compulsive activity that threatens to destroy us. People laugh at the concept of sex addiction, but if left untreated, sex addiction can impair your cognitive skills because lustful thoughts make you grow hair on your brain. <laughs> now I happen to have a powerful predisposition to addictive behavior. That is to say, now I happen to have a powerful predisposition <laughs> to addictive behavior. And it's taken me years of soul searching to determine the root cause. At first, I thought it was just a reaction to the fact that life is absurdly painful. And life is especially painful if you're an artist like me. At the risk of sounding naive, I've long believed that artists should be free to spend their days mastering their craft so that working people may toil away in a more beautiful world. <laughs> but the truth is, my behavior was due to something much less heroic. In the end, Drug use was simply a quick and reliable way to retreat from the world. It was a kind of aggressive passivity stemming from a sad desire to go back to the very beginning. Back when I was just floating along, safe and warm, in the cozy confines of my father's balls. <laughs> but I could never go back to that place. I'd seen too much and I'd grown too large. <laughs> So instead, I spent the latter half of my 20s bouncing from one destructive vice to the next. Uppers, downers, sidewinders, innies and outies. At my lowest point, I was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And that's when I was blessed with what can only be regarded as a sign. Signs can take many forms, but in this case, it took the form of letters, professionally printed onto a large rectangle, <laughs> to form a message for others to read. <laughs> the sign was positioned in front of an old church, and it said, The power to change is in your hands. The power to change is in your hands. There was power in that mantra. There were other words in it, too. <laughs> now, God knows religion isn't for everyone. But at that moment, it was the key to my salvation. So in a move that was both liberating and terrifying, I donated the rest of my drugs to a local food bank and became an evangelical Christian. In the months that followed, I spent my mornings at church, praising God and basking in the warm fellowship of other Biblers. I spent my evenings doing volunteer work in public bathrooms where I would gently stuff religious pamphlets into the back pockets of men standing at the urinals. <laughs> but I found that this wasn't enough. So I started protesting at anti-abortion rallies because life begins at conception. Then I moved on to anti-birth control rallies. Because life almost begins at contraception. <laughs> but it still wasn't enough. I was getting desperate. So on the advice of my pastor, I became the keynote speaker at an anti-gay rally. And that's when I was blessed with what can only be regarded as an intervention. I was invited to my parents' house under the false pretense of a Bible study. But when I showed up, there wasn't a single Bible in sight. And I was like, whoa, what's going on, Mom? <laughs> My mom said, Ken, we asked you here because we love you and we're worried about you. My father wasn't so kind. The old man was too ashamed to look me in the eye. So with his back turned, he said, God damn it, Ken. I didn't raise you to be some candy-ass little homophobe. I was devastated, but I knew they were right. What was I doing? I had no problems with gay people. 
In fact, gay people seem to be more evolved than most straight people I've ever met. All the gays I knew were fiercely intelligent, empathetic, creative, and witty. They drove a grade four LTD. <laughs> and they worked at Applebee's on weekends. <laughs> I was basing all of this off of the one gay person I knew at the time. <laughs> but it seemed legitimate because a single occurrence usually implies a pattern. <laughs> so in a move that was both liberating and terrifying, I donated the rest of my Bibles to a local food bank. <laughs> you know, I read once, and who knows, I'll probably do that again someday. <laughs> but geologists will tell you that the world is made of nothing but rocks. End of story. <laughs> well, we cover in addicts know that the world is actually made of people. As adults, we like to think we're strong enough to go it alone. But geologists will tell you that no man is an island, except for the Isle of Man. <laughs> well, I guess I should wrap this up now. It's a sandwich. I bought it from the deli in the corner, and I should wrap it up, because I don't want the bread to get stale. But before I do, I'll leave you with a bit of wisdom from famous drug addict Rush Limbaugh. Said, I do drugs, Indiana Jones, and I turned out just fine. Okay, thanks.